Uh, my name is Tim Shelford, and I'm a research associate working with Kurt Gooch and Peter Wright of the Cornell Pro Dairy Group. And today I'm going to be presenting our work in developing simulation software to model dairy anaerobic digestion systems. Dairy anaerobic digestion has a number of significant benefits and will be a necessary step in reducing the carbon footprint of production. Specifically, anaerobic digestion can reduce greenhouse gas emissions on farm in a number of different ways. It can also be used to produce renewable energy that's consistent and predictable. As well as for many farms, the reduction of odor associated with their manure handling is a huge community benefit. However, for all the benefits of anaerobic digestion, there are a number of challenges holding it back from wider adoption. And the most significant of which is the large capital and maintenance costs associated with building and operating an anaerobic digestion system. In many cases, there's a low price paid for the electricity produced. That's often just the avoided cost of production. In New York can be as low as four cents per kilowatt hour. For more sophisticated systems, it's often hard to source reliable co-digestion feedstocks and to determine a viable tipping fee or charge for disposal. To help with some of the uncertainties of anaerobic digestion, we wanted to build a simulation tool that could help producers, specifically to aid in the prediction of the performance of dairy anaerobic digesters under varying environmental and operational conditions. We also wanted to examine the potential of pairings with other industries to take advantage of surplus heat and reduce price of electricity. We also really wanted to provide the ability of producers to conduct what-if analyses with the specific aim of pricing electricity, heat, and tipping fees in their digesters. And also this information can be used in sizing equipment to handle the biogas of uh, proposed or operational systems, uh, as well as the feedstock availability. We developed the tool using MATLAB and specifically MATLAB's Graphical User Interface Development Environment, or GUIDE. We developed the model uh, and the processes based on first principles of heat transfer, as well as through efficiencies and performance data that we'd collected uh, as a part of the project. Uh, we also compared the, our models against the heat and electricity production data from two existing New York State dairy anaerobic digestion systems. This is the main page of the Cornell Digester simulation software package where the user can enter the information necessary to simulate an existing or proposed system. Input parameters include information about the herd, the location of the digester, the sizing and physical characteristics of the digester, as well as the equipment that uses the biogas. In addition, the user can enter information about the pre-digester manure storage systems so as to help calculate the greenhouse gas emissions reductions of the digester. We've also included a financial module where the user can enter the capital and operation and maintenance costs of the systems, as well as putting in prices and quantities on electricity, surplus heat, as well as co-digestion tipping fees. The software was originally developed over a multi-year USDA Hatch and Smith Lever grant from approximately 2013 to 2017. Recently, however, we've undertaken to improve and build upon the capabilities of the program, and specifically to improve the ability of the software to model sophisticated co-digestion scenarios. And this talk will focus on these efforts specifically, uh, rather than the whole program itself, which would take much more than 15 minutes to go through. Co-digestion has been identified as a potential means of improving the economics of digester operation through the collection of tipping fees for disposing of organic wastes, as well as the generation of additional energy. This process also diverts organics from landfills. However, there are significant challenges to co-digestion, specifically the question of how much and what to do with excess nutrients from the additional materials brought in from off-farm and also how the quality and content of the co-digestion materials varies over the course of the year and what effect that has on biogas and energy production, which are important considerations when sizing biogas equipment and predicting the energy production and potential tipping fees necessary. In the original version of the software, co-digestion was limited to only seven feedstocks, 
and we could only consider feedstock addition as a constant where we had to assume that it was added daily in the same amounts year round, which doesn't represent the reality of how co-digestion deliveries actually occur. The data for biogas production was based on BMP studies carried out by our colleague, Rodrigo Labutat. Though this represented a simple means of simulating some aspects of co-digestion, a more sophisticated technique was needed to more closely match real life co-digestion scenarios. For our new co-digestion module, we had several goals in mind to improve its real-world utility. Specifically, we wanted to improve the biogas prediction module with increased co-digestion options to represent all of the myriad of different wastes that a digester could conceivably receive. We also wanted to be able to better simulate real-world delivery schedules by being able to change both the timing and quantity of the feedstock additions to the digester. We're hoping that this would better represent the seasonality of the waste availability. And we also wanted to allow the user the ability to schedule multiple different wastes on independent schedules. The start of the co-digestion module is the feedstock addition page. This is the page where the user is able to add, delete, and edit feedstocks. Once feedstocks have been added, they show up on the feedstock table where they can be selected for deletion or editing. The user can set up different schedules for any of the wastes available and even have different schedules for the same wastes to make sophisticated delivery schedules possible. Through drop-down menus, we've provided the user the ability to quickly choose from over 200 different wastes broken down into multiple categories for ease of selection. By choosing from three drop-down menus, the user can select one of these wastes. The database that this tool is based on is from the European Biogas Association. And because waste can vary significantly based on any number of factors, such as the time of the year, the location, the degree of processing, um, and what type of material um, it is, uh, the values presented are suggestions, and we allow the users to edit these values to either more closely match their particular waste um, or to conduct what-if analysis to see what effect uh, changing the values of these parameters have on digester operation as well as biogas production. One of the parameters we've added is a digestibility uh, categorization. Basically, when feedstocks are added to a digester, the biogas isn't immediately available and adds to the production of biogas from the manure over the course of time. To simulate this process, we've used a first order rate model with five different rates that we suggest based on the material type. This allows us to add the, bio, the production of biogas from a particular feedstock over the course of the hydraulic retention time for the digester. However, this doesn't really take into account synergistic or inhibitory effects of mixing the manure or and the wastes. Um, so we examined using more complicated techniques such as the ADM1 model. However, sourcing all of the parameters necessary to simulate all of the wastes we have was not feasible for this project. We felt that using a first order approach was a good first start at approving the prediction of biogas over time with varying wastes. However, we're continuing to work on improving this model. Once the waste itself has been selected and the, the values entered, the user has many options for deciding when it's added to the digester, whether that be on, a, on an everyday, a weekly, a monthly, or a custom schedule, with the option of having schedules vary by month to make accounting for seasonal deliveries uh, much easier. For a weekly delivery schedule, the user can select which days of the week deliveries occur on, again, with the option to exclude months where a waste may not be available. For a monthly delivery, the user can select which days of the month deliveries occurs, occur on. And no, uh, you can't select February 31st as a valid option. For the custom option, the user can select which days of the year deliveries occur on, which in turn converts those days of the year to display the date. Once all of the delivery dates have been chosen through the various means, the user can select whether the same amount is delivered every time, or they can enter in how much is delivered on each entry. In this case, the first of the month was selected as the delivery schedule. Once the amounts have been entered, the user is brought back to the initial co-digestion screen where they, they can either add an additional waste or remove or edit the waste they just added. After entering data in the rest of the program and running the, the simulation, one of the output screens generates the amount of biogas produced. 
Since for the example uh, shown, the same volume was entered for every delivery and the herd size didn't vary throughout the year, the production of biogas from month to month was identical. We can note that this, the scale on the chart um, doesn't start at zero. In addition, the user also has the ability to export this data as well as other data to Excel for further analysis and comparison. So this is a quick run through of the co-digestion module that we've been expanding on. And as I mentioned previously, we're looking at improving on the first order rate model means of predicting biogas production using more sophisticated means such as the um, chemical oxygen demand and the hydraulic retention time for the feedstocks. We've also assumed a constant hydraulic retention time for the digester, but we are looking at dynamically varying that based on the addition rate of materials, um, either manure or feedstocks to the digester. Uh, we also want to uh, have a more sophisticated method to vary the herd population and manure production throughout the year, as well as tracking nutrients throughout the digestion process. We're also providing the ability to predict carbon dioxide production for use in conversion to biomethane, as well as including treatment systems to clean biogas up to renewable natural gas level standards. I would like to thank my co-authors, as well as Lauren Ray of uh, ProDairy for all their help. In addition, this work was made possible through an original USDA Hatch and Smith Lever grant, as well as the continuing work has been sponsored by the Department of Energy Rapid Project and the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation. Uh, thanks very much. Do we have any questions? Yes, um, you might want to speak into this so that the... So towards the end of your presentation, you mentioned that the hydraulic retention time has been assumed to be constant. Um, does that um, limit, um, as a part of the software or as a part of your results, that does that limit uh, the amount of material that you can add per, per day or uh, consider, considering that you're already adding... Um, existing feedstock from the dairy uh, as dairy manure or uh, do you does the software or the web has the capability to be able to answer that um uh, yes to answer your question um uh we we just used a fixed hydraulic retention time um based on the dimensions of the the digester and the um the 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 feedstock rate of the of the manure um the, um, the program also allows the ability to provide some freeboard um, in the digester itself. So um, we didn't specifically look at, um, at, at varying the hydraulic retention time in, in the program, although that, that's something that we were, were gonna add uh, as, the, as we change the amount of the daily amount of manure that might get added as well as the addition of uh, uh, co-digestion feedstocks. To answer your question, great. Any other questions? We do have time, Gilbert. Uh, thank you, Tim, for the presentation. Uh, I was just wondering, is this uh, software available for us to download and work with, or is it still closed off? Um, it, it's still closed off. Um, we are, are, are developing it, but the, the goal is to have it freely available, I think freely available, uh, for the general public to use. And um, that, that the original software was developed with that that purpose and um, the updated software, I believe is gonna also be freely available. So, oh, thank you. So I have a question about the methane generation. Uh, do you have any uh, temperature effects on the methane generation throughout the year? So um, that, that was an assumption that we, um, that we made that, is that the, the temperature control of the digester would be, would be constant. And so um, uh, that, that was a simplification that we made. Um, we, we, look at the, um, the incoming uh, um, temperature of the manure in terms of how much um, energy we need to, or heat we need to provide to the digester to bring that up to the, to the target temperature. Um, but we, we just assume um, that there's a, there is a constant temperature in the digester. And yeah, we, we don't affect the, um, the biogas production rate based on temperature at this point. Um, based on your observations from the data set, uh, I mean, do you have, uh, can you, can the software generate recommendations uh, in terms of, okay, if you have these set of feedstocks available around your dairy, uh, for example, X, Y, Z, uh, you could, you could have those uh, just to make the dairy operators or the digester owners aware of increasing the 
methane generation potential from their particular facilities? Yes. Yeah, so um, I, I think I understand your question. Um, so we, we developed the software so that the user could say, like, if they know that they have three different feedstocks and, you know, maybe they can only get one um, so that they could they could run the simulation and see what the effect on the methane generation would be. Um, you know, what, what effect would that have on um, the other operational characteristics of, of heating the digester? And um, they, they can sort of figure out what their, what their final number is for that waste. And then they could run it again with, a, you know, a different waste and get that number and then compare against the, the first. So um, that, that was sort of the, the main reason we wanted to do this program was so that you could quickly compare um, you know, different, different wastes and, and also so that you could um, see like what tipping fee that you might want to charge uh, so that you can, you know, make economic sense, uh, you know, um, for, for, for deciding on wastes, you know, whether you need to charge a high rate or a low rate, um, you know, is this a, is it producing enough biogas that you, you don't need to charge much for it? Or, you know, is it really, it's not that effective at producing much biogas. And so you, you could, you should charge more for, uh, for disposing of the waste. I'm not sure, does that answer your question or? Yes, yes, it does. Thank you. Yeah. 